Hello, this is review summary of first four weeks of statistics. Week one was all about basic concepts, definitions such as statistics, different types of statistics, different types of data and different types of variables and their interval scales. Week two was about describing a categorical variable and so basically that means we are talking about descriptive statistics of a categorical variable and what are the concepts associated with it and week 3 was about describing a numerical variable which again is a descriptive statistics pertaining to numerical variable week 4 was uh, finding the association or relationship between a numerical variable and a categorical variable, a numerical variable with another numerical variable and a categorical variable and other categorical variable. So let's start with week one. Data, data can be a structured data or data can be unstructured data when data is structured and put in form of a table okay and in general table you observe that there are columns and there are rows each and every row is called case or observation and all the columns and are, are called uh, variables so these variables need, need to have consistent units and if they do have constant units, then we say that it's a structured data unit. And this entire table is called as data set. So then there is a definition of statistics. Statistics is seeking information from the data, trying to get some insights from the data, and trying to make some summaries or conclusions of the data. And maybe over a period of time, with the help of these summaries and conclusions we can make decisions so that is what is the definition of statistics and in doing all this we use different kinds of graphical summaries or graphs like pie charts bar charts scatter plots and we'll get some information we try to get some information make some graphical summaries that is all what is statistics there are two types of statistics here descriptive statistics and infer uh, inferential statistics descriptive statistics is all about uh, make summarizing data and this inferential statistics is all about making uh, making conclusions so for classic example to just describe is if you are um, owner of an IPL team and you are in need of a player in, if you are in need of a player hiring a player then what you'll do is you'll shortlist a few players and try to get that one player out of that so now you when you shortlist you have a data and you have a list of five players and you're looking for a batsman now these five players and there is a table and there is a lot of data in it okay so each and every data for example a batsman name his runs his uh, highest score his strike rate his force his sixes all this information is there so number of runs he scored number of matches he played all these are your descriptive data so you can make some summaries out of this data right but overall at the end using all these different summaries if you are making a decision and picking one player that is your inferential statistics the method methodology or the procedure that you are you are adopting to take a decision is your inferential statistics and all those data that is present number of runs 
strike rate and everything these are all descriptive statistics and then moving on uh, from the statistics then we also saw different types of data data can be of two types categorical data and numerical data categorical data is also called as qualitative data numerical data is called as is also called as quantitative data and cat categorical data has two scales nominal scale and ordinal scale and norm, uh, numerical data has two scales interval and ratio scale so what is a nominal scale nominal scale is nothing but uh, is just pertaining to name that's it pertaining to name what does that mean it means it is a categorical variable for example gender and it has got different categories in gender male or female or we can we call them as categorical data or categories or distinct values of the categorical variable so I'm telling you there is a variable by the name gender and this is a categorical variable okay gender is a categorical variable with two categories male and female or two distinct values male and female or male and female are categorical data so this type of terminology is very much used or uh, used most of the time now similarly like category gen uh, similarly like variable gender there are other nominal uh, nominal scale variables which are blood group with categories o positive a positive o negative a a negative and so on jersey numbers 23 07 45 see the jersey numbers the values are numerical so you might be thinking these are numerical data right no but the JC number has no significant quantitative value right so you are just uh, describing JC number as 23 you cannot add JC number 23 and JC number 24 and expect a result of JC number 47 right so yeah and some other examples are house type is a variable with the categories duplex apartment independent and hair color may be a, a categorical variable of nominal scale with categories brown black red blue etc so nominal scale is all about pertaining to names and it is a categorical data or also called as qualitative data and ordinal data has an identity it is also of categorical value uh, variable of type categorical uh, variable it also has magnitude along with the identity now what what does this mean for example I'll give you a variable by name classes it is a categorical variable of ordinal scale why because the classes the categories of the classes or the categorical data of the variable classes are poor middle rich poor middle uh, upper class and rich so you can see that there is a magnitude okay poor is lesser middle is in the middle upper is somewhat upper rich is all the way top for example another example I'll take another categorical variable called scale and in that scale the categories are agree strongly agree disagree strongly disagree these are the things that are present okay and uh, you can see that there is a, some kind of magnitude to it now ordinal scale has similarities with interval scale and often gets confused with interval scale now what is interval scale interval scale has all the properties uh, you, you you might be thinking I will have all the properties of ordinal scale thing is uh, for example interval scale has equal intervals equal intervals for example uh, in a running race you have athletes who are finishing first second and third 
but you don't know the exact finishing times uh, okay you don't know the exact finishing times so first second and third what are these these are are they ordinal scale or they are they interval scale interval scale as I told you are of equal intervals right so first second third may seem like equal intervals but you need to know that the time between first and second guy who finished first and the guy who is coming and finishing second the time interval of that time interval and the guy who is coming and finishing third so second and third that time interval if that time interval is same then that type of scale is interval scale right and practically in real world it's rarely the case so here three people are uh, uh, running a race and finishing one two and three this is an ordinal scale but not interval scale so some of the other examples of ordinal scales are your surveys or ratings you good average bad satisfied very satisfied neutral extremely satisfied all these uh, survey types uh, are your ordinal scales okay then uh, other kind of examples are uh, hot warm cold hot hotter hotter see again you are having identity magnitude and these are all ordinal scales so you can say that hot warm and cold are they interval scales no you don't know the degree there is you don't know the, if there is an equal interval right between each of them anyways uh, let me give you a small example of ordinal versus nominal there is also a little confusion of ordinal scale and nominal scale so what is an these two are of uh, categorical variables pertaining to categorical variables right ordinal scale and nominal scale nominal scale and ordinal scale ordinal nominal scale is related pertaining to names it has got just an identity but ordinal scale has identity identity along with identity it also has magnitude to it and let's see a simple example so uh, order five movies from your fav most favorite to least favorite when i say that there are five movies okay i'll say favorite movies variable there is a favorite movies variable and the categories of movie variable are like five of them this is a nominal scale but when i say that order these five movies from your most favorite to least favorite most favorite to least favorite then what happens when you order this this has become an ordinal scale but not a nominal scale now coming to interval scales interval scale is a numerical type of variable scale and some of the examples are iq score voltage age ph scale school classes fifth class sixth class temperature in degrees celsius and fahrenheit interval scales do not have absolute zero and uh, and can can take negative values whereas ratio scales do not have negative values in the kelvin scale temperatures cannot be less than zero and hence cannot be negative in other words zero kelvin is a minimum value of temperature possible and hence temperature in kelvin scale has a ratio scale of measurement in the case of temperature measured in celsius scale the values can be negative it can take up to values of as low uh, as minus 273 degrees celsius anyways this was all about week one and coming to week two week two is about describing categorical variable so in any table you could see a column which is a categorical variable which can be of nominal scale or ordinal scale for example this categorical variable could be a gender whose categories could be male and female okay and it could be like scale which is an ordinal scale because whose these uh, the categories of that variable could be like hot warm and cold okay so let's describe or give descriptive 
statistical properties for such categorical variable single column of categorical variable what can we do with that we can first draw a frequency table so in the first column of the table would be category and you will list down the distinctive values of that category for example gender you say male and female okay and you'll on the second in the second column you'll write try to find out the frequency how many males and how many females are there in this that entire column variable so a categorical variable from that categorical variable you could draw a table and found out free what is the frequency of its categories and found out relative frequency then what else you can do you can draw a bar chart you can draw a pie chart from this data if you how because how can you do that bar chart is a simple chart which gives the total count so total count of male or total count of female if you want to compare individually from with one category with another you use bar chart but if you want to uh, see the proportion with respect to other or with respect to total then you use pie charts so how does that table information help you in drawing a bar chart and drawing a pie chart so for example you found out the relative frequency right if you multiply it with 360 you get the angle of your angle okay angle of your pie chart that is how you find out pie chart then why do we need see we are doing or we are drawing a bar chart or pie chart that means we are doing graphical summaries we are trying to get some summary of the data so again that single column of your categorical variable okay which can be of your nominal or ordinal scale from that you drew a ta table frequency table found out the frequency found out the relative frequency you could make graphical summaries of uh, bar chart and pie chart and if you or if, if your categorical variable is of ordinal scale you can also do parento chart parento chart is a bar chart with ascending or descending uh, bars okay these are the things okay what else or what more can we do we have two other things one is the mode and other is the median so these are the two things that you can find out in a categorical variable so what is a mode the most typical value of a data set is the mode so in that categorical variable what is the most frequently occurred value that males are 100 and females are 3 the mode is like what m right 300 and what is a median median is the value the center value of the data set this divides the entire data set into upper and lower half upper half and lower half so these are kind of descript numerical descriptive measures for categorical data okay so with a single column of categorical variable you could draw a frequency table you could find out the frequency find out the relative frequency using that you could make graphical summaries also you could find what the mode is mode is typically the highest or the biggest bar in your bar chart largest uh, largest pie in your pie chart or the first or last bar of your parento chart you could find mode and you can also find the median which is the middle of your data set now before going on to the next week there are a few uh, good practices to be followed when you are doing graphical summaries example the area principle so area principle is a simple principle which needs to be followed so that your graphical uh, so that your graphical summary does not mislead in interpretation while interpreting this might not mislead so one such 
important practice is to have a baseline start with the baseline of zero but sometimes if you're not starting with the baseline of zero you need to provide a proper indication okay of double lines double parallel lines or some scribble lines on your y-axis showing or telling or indicating the person who is viewing that this the baseline of this graph doesn't start with zero other kind of practice is to check for round off errors so if you're rounding off values like for example 22.5 to 23 35.5 to 35 overall if you add that if you want the ideally you should be getting 100 but because you're rounding off you're getting more than 100 and this while drawing a pie chart and if you count all the percentages it would be more than 100 and it doesn't make any sense so this is also not a good practice so avoid overly decorated graphs avoid truncated graphs use special symbols to indicate vertical axis has been modified and check for round off errors and then moving on to the week 3 week 3 is about describing numerical data so let's take a numerical variable one column of numerical variable again this can be your interval scale or your ratio scale and the data could be discrete or it could be continuous i think we missed what discrete is and what continuous is discrete is a non-fractional data and continuous is a fractional data so wherever the fraction is meaningful we call that as continuous data and wherever the fraction is meaningless we call that as discrete data for example children you you can you say that you have three children you cannot say that you have three and a half children or 3.4 children so children number of children is a discrete data and then you say that my weight is 54.7 kgs it makes sense right so this is a continuous data so yeah now if you take an example of uh, a numerical variable with discrete data what can we do with this this uh, discrete data what kind of describe what kind of descriptive inf uh, statistics that we can perform on this one column of numerical data let's see can we draw frequency table yes we can draw frequency table we can get the frequency and we can find the relative frequency now remember in drawing the frequency table the first column is the category and you're going to find out what are the distinct values those are the categories in case some in some time sometimes the number of uh, distinct values are less then that's fine okay if the number of distinct values are huge okay then it becomes cluttered so we use what is called as classes that is we divide uh, that into range like 30 to 40 40 to 50 50 to 60 60 to 70 70 to 80 80 to 90 this is what we do and I'm talking about discrete data so in case of discrete data you up you just observe the distinct values how many of there are there if they are few then just follow those distinct values if there are many use classes now what if this data instead of discrete is a continuous data definitely use classes directly in drawing the frequency table okay in case of discrete numerical data you're going to check the number of distinct values of that variable if there are less you're going to use them or if there are more you are going to make them into classes and in case of continuous numerical <laughs> data you are directly going to make classes okay so irrespective of this you are going to draw a frequency table now so you have also drawn frequency table for a categorical variable right when describing categorical variable you have drawn a frequency table found out the frequency found out the relative frequency yes for the same for, 
for describing a numerical variable also you're going to draw a frequency table going to find out frequency and going to find out relative frequency now one thing that i before i move on i want to tell that when i say classes of 30 to 40 the lower class limit is your 30 upper class limit is your 40 and the class width is the difference between the lower upper limit upper class limit and the lower class limit and uh, it is so for example 30 to 40 right is 30 included or 40 included so a class interval contains its left end but not its right end boundary point a class interval contains its left end but not its right end boundary point so when i say 30 and 30 to 40 30 dash 40 30 is included but not 40 and I say, when i say 40 to 50 40 is included but not 50. so okay now i have drawn a frequency table with free calculated the frequency i know the relative frequency what kind of graphical summaries can we do in case of numerical variables you can do histograms and you can do stem plots these are the two things that you can do histograms and stem plots see stem plot in a stem stem we also call as stem and leaf diagram in a stem and leaf diagram each observation is separated into two parts namely a stem containing all but the rightmost digit and the leaf the rightmost digit for example there is a data 75 and 78 the stem becomes 7 and the leaf becomes 5 and 8 okay so this is your stem and leaf plot now after graphical summaries in uh, describing the categorical variable we could also find out the most typical value that is more than and the middle value that is a median so what kind of things that you can do with numerical variable so we could do mean you could find out the mean of the data it is a numerical data right you could find the mean of the data so here mean of the data if uh, in case of discrete numerical data and if the number of distinct um, numbers are less you have used those and plotted the frequency table and everything right fine so the mean of such then there's going to be a group of data right mean of such data becomes the value into frequency sum of f values and frequency sum of the product of values and frequencies divided by the total number so generally the mean is f1 x1 plus f2 x2 plus so on fn xn by n if at all uh, this is a class uh, class then what would be what would be the mid what would you multiply the frequency with so you multiply frequency with midpoint so for example 32 30-40 is a class and frequency is 3 okay then midpoint of 30 and 40 is 35 so you multiply 35 with 3 so therefore this is an approximation since middle midpoint is an approximate not exact therefore mean of group data is an approximate average or approximate mean then <coughs> this is all about mean and median right so if you add a constant to each point of the data set what happens to the new mean what happens to the new median if you multiply a constant to each data point of the data set what happens to the new mean and what happens to the new median so the answer is new mean becomes in case of adding a constant new new mean becomes old mean plus constant new median becomes old median plus constant in case of multiplication of a constant new mean becomes old mean into constant and new median becomes old median into constant okay
can you find the median of this numerical data as it's the center value of the data set which divides the data set into bottom half and top half but make sure when you're trying to find the median it should be of ordered list so you should arrange them in an ascending order and try to find the median that is the most important so it is a middle value of an ordered list always remember it is a middle value of an ordered list so you need to arrange the data in an increasing order and you need to find so in case the number of observations are odd then the median is n plus 1 by 2 and if the number of observations are even then the mean of n by 2 and n by 2 plus 1 observation is your median if the number of observations is even the mean of n by 2 and n by 2 plus 1 is your median so but always remember arrange the data in increasing order for increasing order first to find the media median now there are something called as outliers outliers are some values which uh, are uh, something not not at all correct so for example uh, you are expecting the values to be of the range range between 20 and 50 but there is 300 value for certain data set that is an outlier okay the sample mean is sensitive to outliers because the mean total mean mean is like sum of all those all the data divided by total data it gets affected sample mean is sensitive to outliers whereas median is not sensitive to outliers then um, what else can we do what else are there so there is something called as mode mode is the most frequent value right now again if you're adding a constant new mode is equal to old mode plus constant and if you're multiplying a constant new mode is equal to old mode into constant apart from that numerical data you also have something called as a range which is the maximum value minus minimum value variance which is uh, which has a formula which is x minus x bar whole square plus sigma of x minus x bar whole square by capital n and this in this sigma it is i is running from 1 to n so you have the data you take the mean of the data and if you subtract each value from this mean square it and add all those things that what that's what you and you divide the with the total number of data points then you get population variance if you divide with n minus 1 you get sample variance okay variance is just an indicative of how much uh, it is varying with respect to mean then we you have you have something called as um, what do you have standard deviation square root of the mean is your sta uh, square root of your variance is called standard deviation one more thing if a constant is added to each data point in the data of the data set new variance becomes old variance new standard deviations become become old standard deviation and if you multiply a constant to each point each data point of the data set new variance becomes c square times the old variance and new standard deviation becomes c times the old standard deviation now then we also have something called as interquartile range so in order to understand in what interquartile range is you need to know what is percentile so a percentile p is a measure used to indicate the value below which a given percentage of observations fall for example the 90th percentile is the value 90th percentile is the value below which 90 percent of the observations are found and it is also the value 
above which 10 percentage of observations may be found so below 90 percent above 10 percent okay this is so for example if uh, uh, 15 student grades are there and 90th percent divides the grades into two parts 90 percent of the uh, grades will be below that number and 10 percent of the grades will be above that number then how do you find out uh, how do you find out that percentile number for example there is a data of 35 38 47 58 61 66 68 68 77 and some data and you're going to arrange them in ascending order first and foremost you're going to arrange them in ascending order right fine then um, you want to know what is the 25 percentile of this data these are the marks for example or if you want to know what is the 75 percentile i think this is a good question what is the 75 percentile and i want also want to know what is the 10 percentile 75 percentile what you have to do is you create a simple table so i'm telling you how to find the percentile of a given for, for a given data set first arrange them in ascending order okay and then create a table first column write it as p that is percentile whatever you want to wish to uh, right and the second column is NP just write NP and third column just leave it now first column is P right percentile in this column fill up whatever you want let's say 10 percentile right 0 0.1 0 0.1 I'm going to fill the first cell of this column P with 0.1 then second cell of this column as 0.25 which is 25 percentile 0 0.5 which is 50 percentile 0 0.75 which is 75 percentile 1 in the second column, n is the number of observations. In the example, I am telling you the number of observations is 10. So NP becomes 1 for 10 percentile, 2.5 for 25 percentile, 5 for 50 percentile, 7.5 for 75 percentile, and 10 for 100 percentile. Now, third column is your answer, that is your percentile. So for example, the first value is 10 percentile so for the, what is the value for the 10 percentile of this given data set now the way you get arrive at the answer of this is you first observe what is the value of NP okay you first observe the value of NP is NP a natural number or a fraction number natural number or a fraction number if it is a natural number like one is a counting number natural number right then what you do is take the first observation of the data take the second observation of the data or the next observation of that data do take the mean of it that is your 10 percentile now let's see for 25 percentile so well, first and foremost so first and foremost before I'm going to 25 percentile I told you take 35 and 38 take mean of it so it is 36.5 10 percentile of the entire data is 36.5 now let's go to 0.25 that is 25 percentile and NP is 2.5 which is a fraction okay now for fraction if it is 2.5 so what is the next it is 3 right so what is the third observation it is 47 this is 47 is the 25 percentile of this observation similarly for 75 NP is 7.5 right find out what is the eighth what is the eighth observation and it is 68 so 75 percent percentile of this data is 68 this is how you find out then what we have is uh, quartiles so what is quartile quartile the, uh, the sample 25th percentile is called first quartile sample 50th percentile is called the median or the second quartile the sample 75th percentile is called the third quartile 
so you're basically dividing the entire data from minimum to maximum and q q1 is your quartile first quartile then q2 is your mean uh, me sorry median or your second quartile and q3 is your third quartile so you have maximum to q1 q1 to q2 q2 to q3 and q3 to sorry minimum to q1 q1 to q2 and q2 to q3 and q3 to max and the difference between q3 and q1 is called your interquartile range and this interquartile range is a measure of dispersion so that was all about week 3 and then coming to week 4 week 4 we can see um, week 4 is about uh, trying to know or uh, uh, trying to know the relationship between two different types of variables so before jumping to week 4 let's just quickly see what all things descriptive statistics that you can do with numerical variable first you can do frequency tables we can draw frequency tables right and then you can make graphical summaries using histograms stem and leaf plots and then you can find the value of mean mode median then you can find the value of range uh, variance standard deviation interquartile range okay these are all the things that you can do then in week four week four is about association between two different types of variables so you uh, try to find association between two categorical variables you try to find association or relationship between two numerical variables and then you try to find some kind of relationship between a categorical variable and numerical variable okay so let's start with association of two categorical variables now in case of a categorical variable or a numerical variable just a single categorical variable or single numerical variable in previous weeks we have seen that you could draw a frequency table find out the frequency and find out the relative frequency can you do something like that yes not the same but you do something similar you draw what is called as a two-way contingency table then you'll try to find out the relative row frequencies and relative column frequencies from that two-way contingency table so basically you're taking those uh, categories of uh, you know uh, categorical variables and plotting it and uh, horizontally in a column row wise and in a column wise and trying to draw this two-way contingency table and if there is any missing data you are going to fill it now the most important thing is a prerequisite for drawing a contingency a two-way contingency table is to have some kind of summaries of the data for example you are trying to uh, trying to find relationship between two categorical variables one gender and two is the ownership of smartphones so you need to have some kind of summary statistics like there are 44 female and 56 male students uh, okay and, and 76 students owned a smartphone and 24 did not and 34 female students owned a smartphone and 42 male students owned a smartphone all these summaries you need to have so that you can fill this two-way contingency table now the point that I'm going to make is extremely important now I told you the prerequisite to is to have the summaries some kind of summary statistics how can you get those summary statistics how can you tell that how can you get the information that how many males are there how many females are there all the things that you have learned for describing a categorical variable how do you get this information you make a create a 
frequency table you fill the first column with categories distinct values and try to find the frequency of it all the frequency of the male and frequency of the female are your number of male and number of female right so all those things describing a categorical variable or numerical variable are the summaries that are the prerequisites now moving on then we draw this uh, table and if you divide the entire row each cell divide each cell uh, by its total row total then you have row total and column total right if you divide each cell by its row total you get what is called as row relative frequency and if you divide each uh, cell by its column total you get what is called as column relative frequency now you know row relative frequency and no column relative frequency now i'm going to tell you that between two categorical variables categorical variable one and categorical variable two that is categorical variable here gender and the ownership okay you can say what can simply say that if they are associated or not associated this is what you can say that much only because these two are categorical variables you cannot give some kind of numerical value but you can say that if they are associated or not associated how can you say if the row relative frequencies are same for all rows then you say that it's not associated with each other similarly if the, the column relative frequencies are are the same for all the columns then you say that these two variables are not associated similarly if the row relative frequencies are different for some rows then we say that two variables are associated with each other similarly the, if the column relative frequencies are different for some columns then we say that these two variables are associated with each other now we talked about two way contingency table then there is something called as row relative frequency column relative frequency and you can make an association or not association based on the row relative frequency and co column relative frequency and observing each row or each column now is the time for the question can we make some graphical summaries between two categorical variables yes you can draw stacked bar charts or 100% stacked bar charts now that is all about categorical uh, relation between two categorical variables now let's move to relation between two numerical variables okay first and foremost in this when you have two numerical variables and trying to find some kind of relation first and foremost is to draw a scatter plot simply go ahead and draw a scatter plot and to draw a scatter plot you need x axis and y axis your x axis is your explanatory variable and y axis is your response variable so how do you know which is a uh, explanatory and how do you know which is a response variable so for example uh, size of the house price of the house can you guess between these two okay what which is a response variable and which is explanatory variable size of the house is your explanatory variable and price of your house is your response variable based on the price of based on the size of your house the price is going to respond at so what i told you draw a scatter plot using the explanatory variable and response variable and visually inspect visually inspect and when i say visually inspect see for four things or four key questions direction does the pattern trend up or down or both 
then second is curvature does the pattern appear in a linear or does it curve third is variation are the points tightly clustered along the pattern or not and fourth is outliers did you find something unexpected are there any outliers present these are the four key questions first and foremost you have two numerical uh, variables and you are trying to find association between them first and foremost you draw a scatter plot and check for direction curvature variation and outliers you get some kind of insights or relationship between these two variables and further you can find out something called as covariance between these two numerical variables what is a covariance covariance quantifies the strength of the linear association between two numerical variables so you have found out that there is a linear association between a numerical these two numerical variables and you want to quantify the strength of that so what you do is you have this data for example age and you have this data height so we call that age as x and height as y now what you do is find out x bar which is mean and find out y bar which is mean so x bar is a mean of age and y bar is a mean of height and you do deviation of x that is x minus x bar for each and every data point and deviation of y for each and every point that is y minus y bar now you have a table with x age data y height data and x minus x bar data and y minus y bar data okay now you can simply observe uh, uh, you can simply use a formula covariance is equal to sigma i running from 1 to n x minus x bar into y minus y bar by capital n and such covariance is called as population covariance and if it is equal to sigma i running from 1 to n x minus x bar x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar divided by n minus 1 such covariance is called as sample covariance now if the covariance is positive then we can simply say that it is a direct proportional direct relation proportional relation and if it is negative it is an indirect inversely proportional relation so let me state this a simple statement when two variables are moving in same direction covariance is positive that is one variable increases other variable increases when two variables are moving in different directions covariance is negative one variable increases the other variable decreases then there is a concept of a correlation the strength of linear relation if you want to tell in terms of very strong strong weak or very weak we use something called as correlation so so a more easily interpreted measure of linear association between two numerical variables is correlation and it is derived from covariance why because r the pearson correlation coefficient r between the two variables x and y is given by covariance of x comma y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y r is equal to covariance of x and y divided by the standard standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y now always remember the covariance value sorry the correlation coefficient pearson correlation coefficient small r value lies between minus 1 and 1 including minus 1 and 1 minus 1 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 1 now um, if this value r is close to 1 then you say that very strong linear relationship okay and since it is a positive it is a directly proportional relationship a very strong linear relationship if for example r for the age and height is 0.9964 
then we see that very strong linear relationship between age and height. Similarly, if it is minus 1, it is also very strong linear relationship. But as one variable increases, other variable decreases. Okay. So we can say that value of r close to 1 as strong linear association strong positive linear association and the value of r closer to minus 1 we can say that strong negative linear association so covariance and correlation provides for strength of linear association between two variables one can describe the association between two such variables using an equation of line so often times we call this as a trend line in spreadsheets and often times there is a capital R square R square the value associated so you can find equation of line and the value of R square if the value of R square is close to zero then it is a bad fit if the value of r square is close to one then it is a good fit and interestingly the capital r square that we are talking about is equal to the square of quotient uh, the pearson correlation coefficient the square of pearson correlation coefficient is is your capital r square and capital R square, if it is close to 0, it is a bad fit. And if it is close to 1, it is a good fit. <coughs> now, let's see the association between a categorical and a numerical variable. So, in this class, in the class, uh, when describing relationship between a categorical variable and a numerical variable the variable that we have taken is a dichotomous variable that is a variable with only two categories for example like gender male or female or income high or low or ownership yes or no then you take the uh, then what you do is you divide the entire data set with these two categories by naming convention of 1 as 1 or 1 as 0 and other with 1 or 0 for example gender male and female right so 0 is male and 1 is female so you are quoting gender quoting everything here then after that you find what is called as point by serial correlation coefficient point by serial correlation coefficient and again this uh, is applicable to only dichotomous variable of that categorical variable and the value of this point by serial correlation coefficient not the value but the formula is y0 bar minus y1 bar divided by sx into square root of p0 into p1 here what is y0 y0 is a mean of is a mean of your uh, group and y1 is a mean of your other group and then sx is a standard deviation of your numerical data and then root of p0 and p1 p0 is the is n0 by n that is number of let's say males if you are quoting 0 as a male number of males by total number of males is your p0 p1 is number of females by total number of females is your p1 so rpb is equal to y0 mean uh, y bar y0 bar minus y1 bar divided by sx into root of p0 into p1 this is all about one week one to week four of statistics thank you